everyone, welcome back to my next video. Uh, today we're going to continue our solar series and, today, and we're going to do a series of frequently asked questions. We're going to do a lot of practical things with, with solar. We're going to install solar, we're going to all kinds of things. Uh, but we're going to also have some teaching and just some answering some questions. And so today we're going to focus on and concentrate on frequently asked questions about solar panels. Okay, so the first question I get pretty often is, okay, Bob, I, I need to buy solar panels. What kind should I buy? There are three kinds of panels. There's amorphous, monocrystalline, polycrystalline. Amorphous are, are, are in a whole other category, and you don't want to buy an amorphous. Chances are you will never get a chance to buy an amorphous panel. Uh, the ones that, few that are on the market still are like the um, uh, Harbor Freight, Panels are, are amorphous and some really cheap ones like that. They've been so far surpassed and you can get a much better panel for barely any more money. Then you have monocrystalline and polycrystalline and that's really the big debate. Uh, when I bought my first panel 10 years ago, it was universally understood that monocrystalline was better. Now it's my, it been my opinion all along that the difference between the two is so minor, who cares? That really is kind of my answer to you. If you get a better deal on poly, by poly. However, in the last couple, three years, it has become kind of the buzz in the solar community that in fact poly does better in shade. Uh, and if part of the panel is in shade and part of the panel is in full sun, poly does better. My answer to you is, eh, I don't know. Uh, is one better than the other? Uh, who knows? You know, the experts are changing their minds about everything all the time. If you just want to spend the money, make sure you get the very best. I, to me, that would make poly the superior buy. But again, it's whichever you buy and whichever you get the better deal on is my personal opinion. Different panels come in uh, high and low voltage. And so I'm asked sometimes, Bob, well, I've got a 12-volt a panel, and I have a chance to buy this 8 and this to buy this 24-volt panel. Can I put them together? And the answer is quite simply no. You must never mix voltage panels. Voltage has this continuum of, of ranges of that a, 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 the same voltage uh, something an item can be. Example, your battery can go down to 10.6 or it can go up to 15 or 16. So it's a 12 volt battery, but at any given moment your 12 volt battery might be in the 10s or it could be in the 15s. It's still a 12 volt battery. So the 12 volt is just a name that we call it. There is no such thing as a 12 volt panel. You'll never look in the back of a, of a solar panel and it'll say 12 volt, never. Most of them are 18. Uh, could be 17.8, it could be 18.9, it could be 19, it could be 20. So what is a 24 volt panel then? Well, a 24 volt panel will start at about 22 or 23 and go up to 35. So you have a 12-volt panel and a 24-volt panel and a 36-volt panel and a, what, a 72-volt panel. And it's just in name only. So, but at any rate, the question is, so there's high and low voltage panels. You cannot mix them on the same controller. The controller will become confused, and what it will do is it will choose the lower voltage, and you will lose all the higher voltage. And so you never mix them. You always have to be on two different controllers. First, Nearly all 12 volt uh, controllers will not handle the high voltages. They will, you will fry it. Uh, they cannot handle that voltage. So you have to check the controller to make sure it will handle the voltage. And the big, big panels, high voltage panels, nearly always need MPPT controllers. And we're, I'm going to answer the question, which, what is MPPT and what kind is it under a solar fax for charge controllers? So I'm not going to talk about that now. Why the big difference? Because the high voltage panels are made for houses. Say you got a, a, a warehouse, and the roof of this warehouse is 150 feet long, and you're going to line solar panels off across the whole thing. Well, imagine the cable length on that run. It's a huge, long run, and it needs a high voltage panels so that the cable doesn't have to be fat. I mean, that would take, that would take a cable the size of my wrist. But if they use a very high voltage panel, and those are probably going to be 72 volts that are putting out 100. So they can use very thin wire 
for this very long distance. That's why house panels are always, nearly always, high voltage. In an RV or a van, you can get away with 12 volt, 18 volt panels uh, because the run might be 20 or 30 feet and you'll just use a little bigger cable to go 20 or 30 feet. House panels always use very high voltages and house panels are sold in very, very high quantities. They're cheaper. So you, that's why you would want to buy a high voltage, big physical size, and it will literally be a big physical size. Uh, I mean, um, I had a uh, 240 watt panel on my roof and it was, I think it was about four feet across by almost six feet long. It was a big panel. The one really good thing that came out of all the panels is the MC4 connector. Once a panel is attached to the roof of a house, it falls under the control of the, um, of the National Electrical Code. And the electrical code for any house requires an MC4 connector. That's how they're universally done. And that makes our lives so much simpler. Connecting two or three or four panels together with MC4 connectors is a piece of cake. At some point, it leaves the panel and has to go into your charge controller. So you have to cut one of the ends off and strip it off so it can be physically attached to your controller. You be a, by an extension cord, you never cut the, the, the MC4 connector that comes off the panel. That'll avoid your warranty. So MC4s are a great thing. Be really glad you got them. They're really super easy to work with. Probably the scariest thing about mounting, of installing a system is the drilling the hole in your roof to get the, power, the cable in. So what we're going to do is talk about different methods of attaching a solar panel to your roof. I'm just going to run down them real quick. We're not going to do any details or anything. Uh, you can buy a flexible panel and usually, I mean literally, buy Velcro strips and Velcro it onto your roof. That's one way to do it and there are a lot of people that do that. Uh, I'm really reluctant to do that. I wouldn't do that myself. The panel, it seems to me, gets too hot. Although, you know, and a lot of people say it works. I have heard of people whose panels literally blew off and so that scares you. Uh, having mentioned heat, let me uh, say something else, and this is really important on mounting your panel. Solar panels work better when they're cold than when they're hot. How bizarre is that? Here you got this black thing, you're sitting out in the sun, and it loves cold and wants to be cold. What you have to do is you have to elevate them off of the roof so that there's airflow and the heat won't build up. That'll just make it hotter. Now, if you take your flexible panel, and Velcro it onto the roof, which is a lot of you have done and are going to do, then there's no air circulation, is there? I personally, I believe that's why we're having a lot of problems with solar panel, the flexibles breaking and not lasting, because they just get too hot. You want your panel to be as cool as you can get it to be. I think the very best method on a van is a ladder rack. You can buy a set of ladder racks for like 80 bucks, and you can buy it. And what I did to make it as cheap as possible is I bought a um, two, eight foot uh, pressure treated pieces of plywood, ran them, I painted them also pressure treated and painted, ran them across and bolted the solar panel onto it. I mean, I literally bolted it down. Uh, and that is as cheap, it's way elevated off the roof, good airflow, you're not bolting anything through your roof. It gives you more stealth. Having a ladder and that up there actually makes you stealthier. So the next most common way to mount your panel is just to drill a hole and bolt them down. And that works really well. All you have to do is put on uh, a good amount of uh, Dicor sealant around it and self-leveling, and, and you'll never get a leak. Now, mentioning, I mentioned minivans. Many, lots of minivans come with their own built-in racks up on top. That's, and your car may very well have one too. That's really ideal to, to mount a rack right on there. It's hidden, it's low, it still gets plenty of circulation. Uh, if, you, if your car or, or minivan came with uh, a rack, use it, take advantage of it. it. It works really, really well. Okay, now there's one more way that we can uh, mount a panel and that is with 3M VHB tape. Uh, VHB stands for very high bond. This tape made by 3M is astounding stuff. Now, how would you do it? Well, I know somebody who taped it directly underneath. He just put it at the bottom of his solar panel. It was hard frame solar panel. And then just taped it right down. I think that's a bad idea. Why? No air circulation. Not only that, you can never remove it. 
I mean, this VHB tape is so strong, you're, it's not coming off. So rather than do that, here's what I recommend. You buy an aluminum L bracket. It's, you, I would get it the full length of the panel. You can get them in four foot and six foot. And then you would mount that. You would tape that onto the roof as an L. So an L like this, the L goes down, the arms come up. And then you do it the right distance so that you have two choices then. You can either bolt through to the solar panel. And what a great deal that is because then you can unbolt it and take it off. Uh, you can keep the panel. And you get the airflow underneath. So that works really well. Another way would be to bolt a second L bracket on top of it to create a Z. So here's an L and here's another L. Does that make sense? It's two L's upside down. L, L. And then you bolt the panel down to the L on both sides and then you tape the, pa the tape down onto the roof. I'm not brave enough to use the VHB tape. I think it's just better to bolt the thing down. Why not bolt the thing down? Fiberglass. What are you going to do with a fiberglass roof? Especially a curved fiberglass roof. And I had a friend with a scamp fifth wheel, which is a heavily curved roof on, and it's fiberglass. Mostly you can just bolt through, drill through and bolt onto fiberglass. That's what I did on my van. When they make your top, if you have someone put on your top, which I did, I had him mount, put runners, two, uh, one by four runners across at just the right places. So I am bolted through the fiberglass roof, through the one by four wood, and it's never coming off in a million years. If, if not, if you have a fiberglass roof, here's something else you can do, and I actually did this one time. We pulled down the headliner, we cut out a piece of like eight by eight plywood, and we put that from up from underneath, put the uh, bolt down through it, and, and bolted it up through this six by six or whatever it was, plywood gasket. Lasted forever. It would never crack because the weight was spread out. It would never pull up. That's the way you can get around fiberglass. And for the curved fiberglass, we made a video of it. And so I have a video about that and I'm not going to try and describe it because it was hard to describe. Watch the video on that. What panels should I buy? You know what? Solar panels have become commodities. And I, you know, there's almost not a question anymore of, will this be good quality and last? So when it comes to the question of what panel to buy, they really have become commodities, buy any one you want on price. However, the one thing to think about is who you buy it from. Because if you buy a no-name Chinese panel off of eBay, but it comes to you and it lasts a year and it fails for whatever reason, it gets cracked, it chips, who are you going to contact to make that right with? The guy on eBay is not going to take care of it. And there's this no-name outfit in China who none of them speak English, and how are you going to get in touch with them? So there's an advantage to buy a brand name solar panel that you know what it is. And in my opinion, you should go to Amazon and buy a, a name panel. Uh, I would consider Renogy. I know a lot of people who have bought Renogy panels and kits. I have three Renogy panels on my roof right now. You know who's selling them. In five years, in 10 years, I believe Renogy will still be in business. So I like the idea of spending a little more and getting a named panel. So that is what I would recommend, which panel to buy, just to buy on price and a name of a company you think will be here in five or 10 or 20 years. There is a big advantage in buying the bigger panels because the bigger panels can be bought really cheaply. Your Renogy panels are going to be more than a dollar a watt. So this would be the question of how much should I pay? You want to pay less than a dollar a watt ideally. The smaller the panel, the more it is per watt. Because remember, the big panels are put on houses and they're made in gigantic quantities and sold in gigantic quantities. So they're going to be cheaper. Can you fit that on your roof? So that, I hope that helps. It gives you an, a little better understanding of solar panels and the ins and outs. There really is nothing complicated about it. Just match the voltage to the panel. Buy a cheap one. If you have the money and the time to learn, buy a better panel and buy build your own system. Uh, so thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of us. I hope you'll like us on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel and we'll talk to you later.